Hello, hello everyone. This is the Daemon Forever wanting to talk about Euro 2012 and uh, well a couple of games, mostly the games that were played yesterday because that was the latest games. I know it started since Friday and there have been some pretty good games but I just wanted to start with yesterday because it's more current and uh, then hopefully I can do it for a few other teams here and there. Maybe not all matches. So yesterday we had Spain versus Italy which was one of the, I would say one of the, uh, I would say better matches of the tournament simply because it was a bit more competitive especially considering I didn't really give Italy much hope but they actually played really well. Spain weren't wholly dominant in possession, they probably still had the better possession but um, Italy really played well and uh, that's a uh, big thumbs up to them and uh, they scored first two with um, Di Natale which was a pretty decent goal lovely pass from Pirlo and lovely timing of the run uh, Casillas probably could have uh, done b better because it looked like Di Natale really shaped himself up it looked like he was gonna uh, curve the ball to the far post uh, but then again you know in the heat of the moment it would have been hard to blame Casillas anyway uh, but then Spain uh, hit back almost straight away uh, this was all in the second half the first half was a bit more bit more cagey uh, I think um, there was one header that Italy had near the end of the half that was on target that was pretty close and good on Casillas for saving that uh, but then after Italy scored Spain came back almost straight away and scored with a nice with a nice through ball from David S Silva I mean that was a beautiful pass Fabregas timed his run really well and uh, just slotted the ball home pretty easily so overall it was a really good game I think um, it also showed to other teams that you know you can play decent football against Spain uh, Spain aren't are no Barcelona basically I mean uh, the, the level of possession and the level of play uh, I don't think was as good as what Barcelona can do but saying that they did still play well and it was hard to say which one was the better team at the end Spain could probably still play better and Italy probably I'd say still can play better as well I mean uh, if they had more possession at least so that was a really good game yesterday uh, these uh, comments that I'm making are just brief analysis of the games and the uh, well, I guess I'll touch upon the other game yesterday, which was Croatia versus the Republic of Ireland. So all these four teams are in one group, Group C of the Euros. And uh, I thought Croatia played really well. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I thought you know the Irish would have a decent chance, but after watching how Croatia played, they were really, really good. Uh, their passing was good. Uh, their possession was good. Uh, the Irish, uh, the Irish gave a lot uh, to the match too, and especially once they got a uh, their first goal, uh, which was equalized things at one all in the first half. That was really decent. I guess the timing of the goals for Croatia was really good too for Croatia, and against the Irish, I mean scoring in like the first three minutes, and just half, uh, just before half time, and again just after half, half time too. Really good times to score. And most of the goals were pretty, I'd say were, were okay. I mean, a lot of people are, are placing the blame for Croatia's first goal uh, against Shea Given. But um, I honestly can't, I don't think I could blame Shea, Shea Given. I mean, he had like two defenders in front of him blocking his view. And the, and the attempt at header from, I can't remember who scored. I can't remember his name. <laughs> He's not too famous a player. Uh, but the Croatia player who scored... The first goal and he also scored the third goal but at his first goal it was seemed like just an uh, sort of instinctive header and uh, it just happened to be on target and it was a weird sort of header like you know it's not it wasn't even strong so you could I think you could forgive Shea given for not expecting that and again his view was blocked uh, so I don't think he was to blame uh, neither for the third goal either I mean when when the ball hits the post and then bounces off back onto the keeper and then in again I don't really think you can blame the keeper as for Croatia's second goal a lot of people a few people might say it was offside and I can understand that I mean he would have been offside if the ball had traveled to Shea Given and Shea Given had say blocked the ball and the ball bounced back to Jelovic 
uh, and he would have been offside then. So I think, you know, the offside rule probably needs a lot of more uh, clarification. It, you know, they could do a lot more with it. You know, explain how things are. But uh, I guess overall, Croatia still did surprise me, and I, I I'm looking forward to seeing how they play against Spain and Italy. Uh, the Irish, unfortunately, since they didn't win and they didn't get any points, are probably not going to get through the group because it, it is a tough group. So, unfortunate for the Irish, but they did play well and you know what, if they can hold their own against Spain and Italy, you know, who knows. Maybe they can pull off some sort of surprise. Uh, but it will be very tough. Uh, so, that's all I really wanted to talk about. Maybe I can talk about actually all the other matches since this is only just 6 minutes. Hopefully I have enough footage, I'm posting FIFA 12 uh, Virtual Pro videos in the background just to have something in the video while talking about these things. So hopefully that's fine with everyone. So of the other matches, ones that really stood out, teams that really stand out I guess in Group A would be Russia, doing uh, really well with 4 goals, Played looked like they played really well, I'm not sure about the Czech Republic, uh, I'm not sure where to rank them in terms of performance. But, you know, if they play well against Greece and Poland, they could probably get through as well. I have no doubt Russia will get through. As for Group B, oh, that was a tough group. Denmark be beating the Netherlands was a big uh, shock, I guess. Although I don't really see the strength in the Dutch side. I, they don't seem to me to be as strong as their FIFA ranking portrays. And uh, even though they came like second in the World Cup as well, again... I don't think they were the second best team of the World Cup. So yeah, the Dutch, the Dutch, although they, you know they should still have uh, beaten Denmark, I guess. Uh, but the, Denmark played well, and you know, the Dutch missed a lot of chances, so that's unfortunate for them, especially in this really tough group with Portugal and Germany in it as well. Uh, the other match of Portugal versus Germany was kind of a shame that Portugal set out to defend rather than attack. Because like everyone has been saying, the last 20 minutes of that match, Portugal were really good. Germany didn't really have to do much. They had already the lead, which was a pretty decent header, really good header. Uh, it was a deflected cross, but the header was still really good. And uh, I, I, I think Germany can do better as well, actually. Uh, but uh, again, it was, it was a tough match, you know, Portugal should be really good. And uh, Portugal had a real good number of chances near the end as well. So, uh, they probably deserved a draw, I'd say. But, you know, it's hard to say that a team deserves something from a match anyway. So, uh, good luck to Germany. I think Germany can can pull through that group. I mean, they just have to defeat Denmark, really. It doesn't really matter what happens with the Dutch. As for Portugal, they need to defeat the Dutch. Which, I actually think is very doable and actually might be a really uh, interesting game if the if Portugal don't set out to defend. If Portugal set out to defend, uh, then I'm not sure what what will happen that match might turn out to be a pretty boring match. Uh, but uh, that's what I want to say today, England is up against France and I'm not really, uh, I don't think really England has that much of a chance against France. I think France have been really improving since their World Cup performance. So we'll see how that goes. I don't really want to get into it before the match actually plays. I just wanted to do some quick analysis of the games that have gone by. I guess I did all of them to a certain degree. And hopefully I'll do more as the game, as the tournament progresses. It's really fun watching sort of an international tournament for football. And I'm enjoying it so far. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time.